everybody, welcome back to the FM24 Challenge. It's not a Youth Academy Challenge, it's a journeyman save in Europe. That's what we're playing. It's going to take a while to get used to not saying Youth Academy Challenge. Anyway, let's go and have a quick review of how the season's gone so far. So the season's actually been going very well, as we are sticking with our 4-4-2 formation and picking up a lot of good results. Some high-scoring games, as you're going to see in these highlights, but generally good results. We are getting a lot of good movement and a lot of variation in our attacking play using the 4-4-2, which is good. No more so is Andrea Gabor Sigagli is, um, I've absolutely butchered that name, but he is getting some very good chances playing predominantly as the false nine in this system. He's rotating in that role quite a lot, but when he plays, he generally does make us tick, and it is allowing us to be very, very creative with our chances. We're not dominating games as much as I would like, but I do feel like part of that comes with the players we have at our disposals. A prime example was playing the team that got promoted with us. I'm not even going to try and pronounce their name, but Solzmala in goal, still not having the best time of it. Expected goals prevented is minus 0.1. One, two. So he's still conceding more goals than he should, and that is something we need to look at. I do think the defence is solid. Um, he is letting himself down in goal a little bit, but it's just what we've got to do. We've got to deal with it. Our backup goalkeeper picked up an injury when we try to rotate him in, and which means Smola is sort of the first choice by default now. But in this game, we did stage one hell of a comeback, and we've got the 4-2-3-1, which has changed. It started with Vinkler scoring an outrageous cross-shot goal, we're going to say he meant it. But the 4-2-3-1, I really like as a system. And this is why. You can see the amount of men that we have thrown forward in this attack. And it's why a 4-2-3-1 can be more attacking. We have a five-channel attack, which is really good, with actually our wing back on the left supporting really high up the pitch as well. And this guy is our holding midfielder, who doesn't really push high up on the pitch. But he has so much time and space to pick a pass that he can launch out to the left-hand side um, and luckily, our, our wing back or winger in this case was good enough to get in there. He has three options in the box and two cutback options if needed. But however, we're very susceptible to a counter-attack if they do clear the ball into that area. But Hadaro squares it and we do get a goal from this one, which was nice. But that is why we have the 4-2-3-1 as a backup. And I'm tempted to utilise the 4-2-3-1 into a bit more of an everyday system, which isn't as attacking. And I think it can work, especially with crosses i do like getting crosses into the box with this system it is something that marco dulic was famous for like a very structured system that played with crossing being the abilities and it is getting the most out of the likes of andreas vinkler and i've put dakic in there because he's been one of our better signings uh, the young center back doing very well 20 years old and he's quite a threat from corners and he's very solid at the back but you can see there a 2-0 win against Saskava which was very good they did get a man sent off but we got a nice win and then a 4-3 absolute barnstorming game saw Michael Omer score at the near post which was good again goalkeeping in the Hungarian second division generally is pretty rubbish Suto scored a penalty to get our second goal of the game we're only showing our goals in this if you haven't realized and uh, and then Vinkler squared it across laid it back Omer to Ola and he got a goal as well and what I loved about this game is that it was mainly our main people scoring goals goals which was lovely because Sizgali was in there as well another near post finish it's a bit like EAFC watching that isn't it but uh, yeah a very even game that ended in a 4-3 win we have not had great results as well but only showed the wins but we're diving into the data and again we're focusing on crosses we are whipping in a number of crosses and we are getting a higher percentage of completed crosses which is the green arrows which you can see fade in in all of the games so these are this is every single game that we won we are looking at the amount of crosses we put into the box and the amount of completed crosses that we actually get in there as well and you can see that the percentage does improve we are increasing our amount of crosses that we're connecting and getting a a recipient of our own team on the end of it they're not always great if you look at this one, only three crosses got completed and one of them was a corner, so that doesn't really count. Um, and it's not the worst game either. But as we go through it, you can see there is a sort of pattern of play to see how this is happening, like that one there. Two corner crosses and uh, only one from outside the box. Not great. This one, we play Gior, who are a half-decent team in our division. We only completed one cross in this. And I don't think... We're going to look at some highlights in a minute from this game here a 2-0 win where we dominated the game without creating really good clear-cut chances but the crosses you're going to see i think we get into good positions and we're actually struggling a little bit with the players in the box you can see 29 unsuccessful crosses in this game alone 
and it's not we get as I said getting into the good positions I think it's the strikers that are sort of letting us down Vinkler this is a tough cross to put in on the volley um, it over hits it a little bit beyond our two strikers that are in there or the, the striker in the false nine because this is still in the 4-4-2 Rosas puts in a low cross it's easily cleared and we try to get it back into the box Suto we're not worried about the corner it's actually the second cross that comes in here and again it's a, it's a repeat isn't it it's a dink to the back post and we're not quite tall enough to get there and, and put it in the box. Vinkler on the right-hand side cuts in, goes back to his right foot, low cross in is easily picked up by the goalkeeper, and there's a running theme. So an, an easy fix is don't have low crosses. We're going to start mixing our crosses up a little bit more because we're putting in a lot of sort of more drilled crosses, and they're not ultimately working brilliantly. I do think we can mix it up a little bit more. Hadaro crossing from deep, and again, we get out jumped at the back post. So I think... I want to stick with a crossing-based wide system because it is what the philosophy is that we're picking for this game, for this series, and I think we can make it work, but I think it's going to have to revolve around the right personnel, and that's what we're going to look at moving forward. Yes, thank you, Past Dave, for that little edit. You seem to be enjoying those edits, so I think we'll try and keep them going. I can't promise they'll be every episode. They do take some time to sort out. But uh, yeah, we're fourth in the table, which is incredible. Uh, 26 points from 14 games, a plus 10 goal difference. We are doing really well, really, really well, actually. If we're going to have a look at the schedule. So we're in decent form, a 2-0 win and a 4-3 win in our last episodes or last games. But today we're taking on the team that are top of the Hungarian top division, the OTP Bank Liga. And they are top by two points. We are taking them on in the cup. The fourth round of the cup It's going to be a very, very tough game, but it should allow us to see what sort of level we're actually at. Now, the only tactical change we've done since the last episode is we're still sticking with a 4-4-2. We've got a ball-winning midfielder now on defend rather than on support because that makes a crucial difference for giving us some support at the back. And in terms of what we do on the ball, we're working the ball into the box. The number of crosses we looked at before were just disastrous in terms of the amount we attempted and the amount we completed we put a load into the box but completing them was pretty dreadful so we've added work into the box and it seems to have worked absolutely wonders for us but how are we going to get on against a team which are top of the division above us this will be a good sort of barometer to see how far away the second league is from the first league we're fourth in the second league they're top in the first league it could be very interesting. They're playing a 4-4-2 with a double playmaker, apparently, which is very interesting. A two-playmaker midfield. Um, a pressing forward, a poacher, an inverted winger will come in up here. Yeah, it's going to be... I sort of feel like we might be able to dominate down their right-hand side, to be honest, which is where Winkler is, and he is playing very, very well for us this season. But the first thing we have to take care of is bringing in a new right-back because uh, Sasbo is out... Uh, injured, not suspended, injured for this one. So it probably will be Rosas, but I don't really like playing him as a right back. I mean, we can do, we can do this. We can bring him in, uh, if it will allow me to bring him in. Bring Rosas in, he goes to a full back on support, and then Suto becomes uh, the wing back sort of on defend. Although he's on defend, he does push up a little bit higher, but... We'll see. The other thing we will do, we might do, is push him to an inverted fullback and then him to an inverted wingback. So we give an extra man in midfield. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, it does leave a spot for us on the bench as well, which we'll give to uh, Kovacic or Kovacic, Kovacevic, Kovacevic uh, as a left back on there. But other than that, we're going to stick with the team that has been performing very, very well for us so far. So let's get into the game. And we'll see how we get on. Omar is coming alive. He's getting a few more goals now up front for us. I don't know if he's got a long-term career at the club, uh, but we will see. Don't let our good form come to end. The pressure's all on them. Go and cause an upset. The pressure's all on them. Go and cause an upset. I think that is a wonderful thing to say because they are top of the first division and we are not. We are in the second division. So really, the only pressure we have... Oh, I've got a new photo as well as a manager. Do you like that? AI-generated photo of a football manager. I thought I'd put it in. Uh, yeah, there's the 4-4-2. We need to go and just do the opposition instructions as well so that we make sure we are clattering their team where needed. So we're going to clatter the whole back four when they're on the ball. Uh, and these two in here, we're just going to say to press... Now, you're going to be the deep-lying one, right? So let's press you when you get the ball. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't open up too much space, but we're going to tightly mark the deep-lying playmaker 
in there so that he hopefully doesn't get on the ball. But when he does get on the ball, we go and pressure him uh, really, really hard to try and make a difference. We're going to stick with our general shape, which is in a positive starting fashion. Uh, and hopefully we can see see what this game brings. Obviously, we're not chucking. We keep our shape a little bit more. We're not playing counter, which means we're not running out of position as soon as we run the ball. Uh, generally, we hold our shape. As Alex puts it in, we've we've got the grey ball again. Oh, I thought I fixed that for all the competitions. Obviously, you need to do it for the Hungarian Cup. Um, although it might not matter because we might get knocked out in this game. Uh, Beander goes back to Stefanov. Edge of the box. Oh, just over the bar. Not a bad effort from Stefanov. It's all the first division team at the moment. Five shots to our none, as you would expect them to sort of dominate the, the play. We could change to our 4-2-3-1 as well, which will give us that extra man in midfield, which may be advisable to do, although at the moment they're just sort of getting in round the thanks. I think we're going to change our rest defence. I think we are going to do what I mentioned. Inverted wing back on support. Rosales goes to inverted full back on defend, which gives us a three. We should give an extra man in midfield when we get the ball through transition. And we'll see how it goes. Tajiti with the corner then. 18 minutes gone. Uh, ball in. It's headed away. And my phone is going for my front doorbell. So I've just got to get that in the background. Um, but 20 minutes gone. Nil-nil. Six shots to none. Two on target to none. We're actually not doing dreadfully. Tajiti into Stefanov. Um, Winkler picks it up. Vinkler comes for a ball through. Oh, we've won it back by Gajarin. Gajarin into Vinkler. Vinkler shoots. He's hit the bar. Oh, what an effort. What an effort. 30 minutes gone. We've had one shot. It's off target, but it's hit the bar. It's actually probably been the most dangerous effort of the shot of the chance. Uh, of, of, can't speak. Dangerous chance of the game is what I'm trying to say. And I do feel like they've had the better of it, but you would expect that. If we can nick a goal, I'd be very happy. Dakic trying to get under it. Can't get there. Vinkler... Left-hand side, swings it in, goal! It's Michael Oma! He puts us 1-0 up, Vinkler was involved as he always is, and that is 1-0 with two shots on goal, one shot on target. We have taken the lead in this cup tie. Vinkler bought it down the left-hand side, fired it low, and Michael Oma is there to stick it past Petkovic in goal. 1-0. That is absolutely superb stuff. Can we take it into half-time? Yes, we can. We have a 1-0 lead. Going into the second half. So I'm just going to um, outstretch my arms. Say you're doing well. Keep going till full time. We'll look at the tactics. The only thing I'm going to do is drop our wingers back onto support. We'll drop one winger back onto support. We'll keep Vinkler on attack because he's doing a really good job. Uh, and then we're going to start the second half on balance. Because at 1-0 up, we don't need to take risks. We've somehow got a lead here. Gujarin fires in a free kick. It's headed away. But Suto will pick this one up. Suto comes down the left-hand side. What can he do with the ball here? Tries to put it across. Omer's there. He's put it wide. Oh, the commentary shed. He should have scored. And what a start to the second half that would have been if we could have got a second goal. But overall, I'm very, very happy. We're going to give him some praise. I'm very happy. And we're actually controlling the game as well, which is incredible. Suto goes up to Omer. Michael Omer comes in sealed, holding on to the ball. Suto on it again. Just going down there. He's, he's enjoying life as an inverted wing back. I'm not going to lie. Sokionis is trying to get under it. Spasic is there. Great tackle from Godzev in the middle. Spasic brings it forward. Filipovic. Filipovic into Ilyevsky. They're looking to potentially hit us on the break, but our rest defence was back and doing a good job. Spasic is there. Cuts in field. Ball in. Ilyevsky in the back post over the bar. Sismola, not sure if he had it covered. He has improved as well. Um, he is getting better. But on the hour mark, how are we doing? for fitness um a few look complacent we can't have i'm not having complacency in my team uh we'll bring on mensa in there for you and i think i've got a feeling that you are going to be the better uh ball winner strength endurance tackling and then godziev telman is better with quickness endurance uh eh, no we'll probably leave it as they are to be honest uh, Guerin on the left will take off as well for Gaspilimar. He can come on. And Berez will keep the back four. Though Rosazes Rez uh, is my, I think, my nemesis of our own team, which doesn't really make sense. But he's just, he moans, and then when he plays, he doesn't do pretty well. Oh, but the, he's, he's the only option we've got at right back at the moment. And here he is, getting outpaced by Spasic on the left. Spasic cuts into the box. Rosas did put a 
decent attempt in the tackle. It Matic with the header bouncing around, and Christopher Vida puts it into the bottom corner for the Premier League team, whose name I completely forget. Krivada, I think it is. Spasic came down the left hand side. I thought was us after me bitching about him actually did all right, but yeah, Matic it was oh, it just randomly bounced into Vida's path, uh, and he took the goal well. We'll go back to positive. Uh, let's see if they've made any substitutions that we just need to be aware of in here. Yes, they have. See, they've brought on a new left back that is going to be dictating the game. A new central midfielder who will be dictating the game. And a right winger that we don't care about. But let's uh, just see if we can close them down. 1-1 one, one with 20 minutes to go. They may win this and it might be a fitness thing. But we're holding our own. Good header away. Up it goes to Gaspilamere into Winkler. Vinkler, oh yeah, he tried to do it all on his own, didn't he? Could have maybe passed it. He looked offside, Filipovic. He looked offside, ball in, great block on that one. It was offside. So the referees make a, a good call. Throw in deep in the opposition half, up to Spasic, back to Stojanovic. Stojanovic comes forward with it into Bianda. Stefanov, Matic, back to Bianda again. They're looking to build the ball out from the back. Petkovic goes long, looking for the goal scorer of Vida. Good header from Suto. But we can't. Oh, we do get on the loose ball. Suto does really well. Oh, he's just got the pass wrong. Looking for the run of Sionkon of. <laughs> what's his name? Sozorokonios. I'm absolutely butchering that. Melnik into Jovicic. Over the top, but we should cover that one. And Berez hooks it away. Vida back in. Oh, great touch from Ilyevsky. Oh, and it's just becoming undone, isn't it? We'll go back to a winger on attack. Um. We're going to take you off. Sizgali, who's been very, very good for us this season, can come on to start uh, to play in this game. Uh, do we have? We can bring on Sizani, and we're going to have to go for this a little bit more, I think. So wing back on support. Yeah, we're just we're just going to push. We're just going to leave two at the back. We have to make an effort to try and win this game, get back into it in the cup. As uh, the, the, maybe the quality of the first division teams just pulling through a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. Is that a yeah? Yeah, a uh, handball there from Godzev in the middle not too long to go let's give them some encouragement we have been the, the second best team in this game but i feel like that's to be expected right we're playing against the premier league team who are coming here expected to win we gave them a scare going one nil up but as the time ticks down i think that's going to be that and it is 2-1 we're going to lose here I'm not i'm not upset i'm not upset I'm not upset. I feel like we played well. We made some good tactical changes in the first half. I'm proud of your efforts. I think we go with that. Ah, but we're out of the cup, so I don't have to worry too much about the ball thing happening immediately. But yes, we're out of the cup. Uh, we get to the fourth round, defeated by the team top of second. But we lost, but only by one goal to the team that are top of the division above us. So I think that leaves us in good stead. I think that's going to leave us in a pretty good position to be fair right november as we said in a previous episode is going to be like the halfway point of the season so i think we come back well i was going to say in january but it looks like we've got a massive winter break um is there a transfer window in january we've also got to start looking at what other jobs may be available as well okay we'll come back after january then we'll come back in like february maybe to take on honved i know they, they're a big team in the league um maybe then maybe zte we'll see how it's going we'll do the whole of november and the whole of december on or off camera uh, behind the scenes and then you'll get a nice recap in the next episode thank you so much for watching leave a like subscribe if you're new leave me a comment let's get more people to find this series by liking subscribing and commenting on it and uh, yeah i'll catch you in the next one cheers